This video gives a brief introduction on our ICML work on invariant rationalization. To start with, let me first explain what is rationalization. Rationalization is a machine interpretation technique that aims to find a small subset of the input, called the rationale, that satisfies two general requirements. First, the rationale should suffice to yield the same prediction as the original input does. Second, the rationale should be human interpretable. As an example, here is a beer review, and the task is to predict the ratings of the different aspects of the beer. Then the selected rationale for the look or appearance rating should best explain why the appearance is five stars. An example rationale can be pours ridiculously clear with tons of carbonation, and this is a real good looking beer. On the other hand, the rationale for the aroma score can be the aroma is kind of bubblegum-like and grainy. Over the recent years, people have proposed different specific criteria for finding rationales. One very common criterion is called the Maximum Mutual Information Criterion, or MMI. MMI defines the rationales as the subset of the input that maximizes the mutual information between the subset and the model output, subject to certain sparsity and continuity constraints. In other words, the selected rationale should predict the output as accurately as possible. One existing approach to finding such MMI rationales is by the following game theoretic framework, where there are a generator and a predictor. The goal of the generator is to generate rationales from the input text, and the goal of the predictor is to predict the output based on the selected rationales. Both players are trained jointly to maximize the prediction performance. However, there is one problem with the MMI criterion. Since it only focuses on maximizing the probabilistic correlation between the rationales and the output, it is prone to finding texts that are spuriously correlated to the output. Going back to the beer review example, here is another piece of beer review, and suppose now the goal is to find the rationales for the score of smell or aroma, which is a positive score. There are in fact multiple sentences that are strongly correlated with the smell score. The first sentence is of course the review on the smell aspect because it truly explains why the smell score is positive. In addition to this, the review on the palate aspect can also be strongly correlated with the smell score because smell and palate are correlated senses. Finally, the overall review is also of strong correlation with the smell score because it is a summary of all the different aspects and the smell aspect is one of them. As a summary, we have seen an example where there are three sentences that are strongly correlated with the output. So the MMI criterion is free to choose any of them. However, we only want the algorithm to select the first sentence because it is most likely to be associated with the cause of the smell score. Motivated by this, we propose a new rationalization scheme called invariant rationalization, which, instead of maximizing the probabilistic correlation, tries to select the sentences that can causally explain the output as rationales. Invariant rationalization approximates this causal inference task by searching sentences that are invariant. The notion of invariance was recently introduced in the context of invariant risk minimization. The main idea is to introduce a set of environments that govern the priors of the input features. And the causal explanation should maintain the same predictive power across all the environments. To formalize our rationalization problem, we first build a probabilistic graph, where the input x is divided into x1, x2, and x3, each with a different probabilistic relationship with the output y. In particular, x1 is the causal explanation of y, x2 is a consequence of y, 
Finally, x3 does not have a direct connection with y, but it can still be highly correlated with y because it is correlated with x1 and x2. This probabilistic graph has a nice correspondence with the beer review example given just now. The review on the smell aspect, which is the true explanation, corresponds to x1. The overall review corresponds to x2, and the review on the palette aspect corresponds to x3. With this graph, we are able to formally analyze why MMI is problematic. Consider an example where all the variables are binary. Define the probability distributions as follows. The prior of x1 is uniform. Then, p of y given x1 is set to 0 0.9 if y takes the same value as x1. Next, p of x2 given y is also set to 0 0.9 if both take the same value then it is easy to compute by the Bayesian rule that the conditional probability of y given x2 is exactly the same as the conditional probability of y given x1. Furthermore, if we specify the prior of x3 as shown on the slide, then the conditional probability of y given x3 is again the same as those given x2 and given x1. In short, in this example, the predictive power of x1, x2, and x3 is exactly the same, so there is no reason for MMI to favor x1 over the others. In fact, without further information, it is very challenging to distinguish x1 from the others. However, this challenge could be resolved if we have access to another piece of information, the environments. Formally, a set of environments is defined as a variable E that impacts only the prior distribution of x1, x2, and x3, as shown on the probabilistic graph, but does not have a direct edge to y. Then x1 can be distinguished from x2 and x3 because p of y given x1 will remain the same across the different E, but neither p of y given x2 nor p of y given x3 does. To get a better idea, let's go back to the example where all the variables are binary. Now, we assume there are two environments. In environment 1, all the probability distributions are exactly the same as the ones that are previously defined. In environment 2, all the probability distributions are almost the same, except that the prior probability of x1 being equal to 1 is changed from 0.5 to 0 0.6. Here, we denote the distribution under environment 2 as q rather than p. Then it turns out that this small change suffices to expose x2 and x3. In particular, in environment 2, it can be computed that q of y given x2 is no longer 0 0.9 when they take the same value, as is the case in environment 1. Similarly, the conditional probability of y given x3 is also different across the two environments. Only x1 as the condition maintains the same conditional probability of y across the two environments. And this nice property is called invariance. Here is a more formal definition of invariance. An invariant feature z is defined as a feature conditional on which the output is independent of the environment. Or equivalently, the entropy of y given z and e should be the same as the entropy of y given only z. Building upon this definition of invariance, our invariant rationalization framework is formulated as follows. It contains three requirements. First, the rationale should be as informative of y as possible. Second, it needs to be a short and continuous selection of text so that it is human interpretable. Finally, it should be invariant. Given this formulation, our next question is, how do we design an algorithm 
to solve for invariant rationales? Well, we propose a game theoretic framework to solve this problem, where there are three players, an environment agnostic predictor, an environment aware predictor, and a rationale generator. The environment agnostic predictor tries to predict Y based only on the rationale. The environment aware predictor also tries to predict Y, but based on both the rationale and the environment ID. The rationale generator tries to find a rationale that minimizes the performance gap between the two predictors. The intuition is that if the rationale is invariant, knowing what the environment is in addition to the rationale should not improve the prediction performance. In addition to invariance, the generator should also maintain a good performance of the environment agnostic predictor and to ensure a sparse and continuous selection in order to satisfy the other two requirements. To evaluate how well this framework works, we perform an experiment on the beer review dataset, where the task is to predict the sentiment of a particular aspect. The environments are partitioned according to different degrees of correlations among the aspects. This result compares the rationale alignment with the human selected explanations. The baseline RMP is the MMI based algorithm that we already introduced. As can be seen, our algorithm can select rationales that are better aligned with human explanations. Here is a visualization of rationales selected for different aspects, where we can see that our algorithm can locate the review of the correct aspect of the rationales instead of selecting the aspects with false correlations. We also perform a subjective evaluation where the subject is presented with the rationale of one aspect of the beer review generated by one of the three methods where the unselected words are blocked and they are asked to guess which aspect the rationale is talking about. This plot shows the accuracy of those responses, which again verifies that our algorithm can better select the correct aspects. This concludes my introduction. If you have further questions, please refer to our paper and code. Thank you.